Good day. You know, it's funny. Oh, it's always someone else's fault when someone wakes up to the fact that he's in servitude. Well, I'm going to touch on that today, whose fault it really is. Let's go back to the real cause of our enslavement. I hear it again and again and again and again and again and again. People claiming they have legal, constitutional, human rights, charter rights, common law rights, and or God-given rights. Regardless of which rights you claim, those rights come with corresponding duties. For example, you get a, the right to drive. If you apply for a driver's license, you get the right to drive. If you don't adhere to the rules of the road, you might lose that license. You have the duty then to obey the laws of rules of the road, right? If you don't, you lose the license. Well, <clears throat> for example, this is another one. You want your God-given rights to be under the perfect law of liberty, then you must accept your God-given duties. The first of which is, thou shalt have no other gods before me. Nobody want, everybody wants to talk about rights. You got rights for this. You got rights, 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 rights. But nobody wants to talk about their duties. Well, yeah, you got duties as well. This is what we're talking about here. Where do your rights and duties come from? That's the only thing you got to think about. Trudeau, <laughs> Canada, Australia, King, Queen. You're from your maker. Yeah, so <clears throat> that is the, our first and foremost duty. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Doesn't say to obey God, just says no other gods before God. Had we adhered to that one command, just that one command, not chosen others to reign over us, kings, queens, presidents, politicians, whatever, we'd not have human governments reigning over us. Have you had enough yet? <laughs> I propose that these that these I propose that these human governments are doing to the people as commanded them by God. I'm going to show you that. Not because it be the will of God, but because it be the will of the individual, the people. Religions, so-called, have done a very good job of turning people from God. Here's what God says religion is. I get there's a multitude of religions out there and all sorts of mumbo-jumbo, and that's all it is. Complete and total nonsense. But here's what God says religion is. We're talking about God here, right? So we got to go. The, we don't go to dictionaries. We're not learning about God. We go to the Bible. We don't go to human dictionaries for understand God or what God's saying here. But anyhow, James one two seven, pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this: to visit the fatherless and the widows in their affliction, and keep himself unspotted from the world. That's what God says religion is. <laughs> Pretty simple, right? And I get it. The people do not know God. They don't believe in God. Do not believe that there is a God. Or believe, and some believe that men wrote the Bible. Well, fine and dandy. So what? It states, regardless, it states in the Bible. That's what I'm going to be talking about here today. If you do this, you will be in voluntary servitude. Voluntary servitude, not involuntary, voluntary servitude. To institutions formed by man. And I'm speaking in today's terms with respect to whatever I'm, what I'm going to get into here. And lo and behold, everyone is in servitude to institutions formed by men. The bank, the municipality, your country, your state, your province, whatever. <laughs> Everyone's in it that I know. And so when I say everyone, I don't know everybody in the planet to make that blanket statement like that but i think you get my drift so once again i'm going back to one samuel eight because this is where god gave us notice this is notice from god to us notice unfortunately this was the duty of our fathers our fathers never taught us the word the law the commandments in the bible so if you want to point fingers is why you're enslavement <laughs> You want to blame your dad because God says that's the duty of the fathers. You know, in times past, every seven years, the fathers would do that. And every seven years, all the people got together. They called it a congregation. Not like your uh, religious institutions today. Your, uh, what do they call it? Uh, charity, registered charities. <laughs> no, they got together every seven years and they would be read the law again. So nobody forgot the law. Well, somewhere along the way, that things went sideways for us. <clears throat> that's not about blame. It's certainly not what you're going to cry to the government. Well, it's, it's the government's fault that I did this. It's, it, it's his fault that I did this. It's their fault. It's everybody's fault by my own. Forget it. Your father had the duty to teach the law, and he didn't do that. And his father, him, and so on and so forth. 
remember who's your maker <laughs> see i get it the people do not know god do not believe in god do not believe there is a god or believe that men wrote the bible but regardless it states in there if you do this you will be involuntary in in voluntary servitude the institutions formed by men so we're going to run going to read some of the verses from 1 samuel 8 now for you this is notice to us from god our maker and the lord god said unto samuel hearken unto the voice of the people in all that they say unto thee for they have not rejected thee they have rejected me that i should not reign over them interesting in the uh, uh, god save the queen born to reign over us counterfeit queen counterfeit king but there it is born to reign over us and a lot of people love the queen a lot of canadians out there australians you know that's that's their king that's the queen they got the documentation to prove it whether they know what it means or not one samuel and that was one summary sorry that was one samuel 8 7 so now i'm going to go into 8 and i'm going to go right through from now to 17 see our comment along the way or according to all the works which they have done since the day i brought them out of the <clears throat> up out of egypt even unto this day when they were in wherein they have forsaken me and served other gods so do, so do they also unto thee. Now therefore hearken unto their voice, howbeit yet protest solemnly unto them, and show them the manner of the king that shall reign over them. Shall is a command, shall reign over them. It's black and white. <laughs> yep. Tell them the manner of the king that shall reign over them if they reject me. Nine. So therefore, uh, sorry, 10. And Samuel told all the world's words of the Lord unto the people that asked him of him a king. Remember, they've asked God for a king here. They've asked their king for a king. They've asked their maker for some other foreign fucking fiction king. Jesus Murphy. The fuck are we thinking? Sorry for the language. <laughs> Emphasis. Uh, and he said, this will be the manner of the king that shall reign over you. He will take your sons and appoint them for himself, for his chariots, and to be his horsemen, and some shall run before his chariots. You fast forward to today, and, you know, police cars, bus drivers, taxi cabs, blah, 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 blah. And he will appoint him captains over thousands, and captains over fifties, and will set them ear to his ear. Let me start that again. And he will appoint them captains, oh, captain over thousands, and captains over fifties. It will set them to ear his ground and to reap his harvest and to make his instruments of war and instruments of his chariots, goods and services, products. <laughs> and he will take your daughters to be confectionaries and to be cooks and to be bakers. It's all employees here, right? Everybody. And he will take your fields and your vineyards and your olive yards, even the best of them and give them to his servants. And he will take a tenth of your seed and of your vineyards and give to his officers and to his servants taxation. And he will take your men servants and your maid servants and your goodliest young men and your asses and put them to work for you. He's taken your property, this other king that shall reign over you. He will take a tenth of your sheep and ye shall be his servants. Shall be, shall is a command. Remember, I said God's given us notice here, but we're <laughs> ignorance of the notice is no excuse. There it is. Who are you going to blame? Like I said, <sighs> King 1611, King James knew full well the authority he and his successors were given them by God when God said at 1 Samuel 8 11, This will be the manner of king you shall have <clears throat> if you reject me as your king slash father says god in other words god said this is the type of king you will have if you reject me and king james said this is the type of the king that i and my successors will be and here we are we're all in it i know you don't want to hear it but yeah because you got to take responsibility but and you know where to blame anybody no oh, jesus i mean i did oh boy uh no 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 i don't accept that nonsense not me man it's them it's always somebody else how do we know this about king james here we have the notes made during the time they were creating the king james version of the bible king james version king james version his version right <laughs> nevertheless they specifically reference samuel 1 8 
per, uh, 1 Samuel 8, 10 to 17. I kid you not. I have it. It's, it's in the old language for the Fs. You know, they have the Fs, which today is S's. <laughs> She's why they figured out uh, that, that language. But anyhow, they specifically reference 1 Samuel 8, 17 as the authority to do what they do to the people. And they were doing it because that is what God said the human king will do, shall do. We had turned. I did it. Everyone I know did it. We chose another to be our king and Lord. God gave us notice. He warned us of the consequences of rejecting him as our king, father, maker, owner, ruler. And he told us, he said, this is what this king shall do. So he's commanded the king. So you see King James go, well, this God says right here, this is the kind of king you shall have. King James says, well, that's me and my heirs and my successors. Nothing's changed. So if you have government issued identity documents, they and the records, the original applications, are evidence used against us that we had turned. Simple as that. There it is. That's the basis of it all right there. Yeah, I know this is you know 500 years ago, 10,000 years ago, doesn't matter. The point should be very clear here and everybody is living and everyone's a servant, right? <laughs> to some fictional thing, some counterfeit thing. You did it knowingly or unknowingly. Put simply, had we not, not breached that first duty, that first commandment, we'd not be in this worldwide mess. We not have men at the helm of a nation's destiny nor reigning over people. I don't care what title they got, it's men, there's only people here. We not have extended them the power and authority God granted us. <clears throat> Our statement of the benefactor and other information we provide can help you reclaim your identity, your power and authority, restoring your God-given rights and duties. So people, <clears throat> there it is. I don't know why people have a hard time accepting that. It's in black and white. Everyone's in servitude to some institution formed by men. It's telling you here how that came about. <clears throat> and we all know persons are fictional beings. And of course, all of those things apply on that side. To choose that king, you got to become the person. I'll put the mask on, appear in person, blah, 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 blah. So there it is. It's all one plus one is two stuff here. It's real simple. <laughs> well, sometimes one plus one is three. But work with me here. <laughs> The education system so <clears throat> yeah and so we have these uh, notes that were made during the time they're making the bible and um the king's just doing what god said he would do basically the god god said whoever your king is he's commanded to do this to you so maybe you want to repent so to speak and come back to god <laughs> your maker maybe you want to start listening and paying attention to just a second here because you know what <clears throat> Y'all can go knocking on all the doors you want, try all the tricks and traps and different things you want out there. It ain't going to get you very far. I'm not talking about everybody. Some people are thinking they got some pretty wise stuff, but generally what I hear in the, see in the internet, it's just like, my God, you guys you got to be kidding me. People are actually thinking like this and talking like this. Like one guy talking about the, uh, the Lord's prayer, you know, forgive them, forgive them their trespasses. We forgive those who trespass against us. So somehow this guy's concluded that that's worth forgiving the bad guys. <laughs> Cause he went to the bad guy's dictionary to find out the meaning of the words. You see? So it's like, well, God wrote the Bible, not those guys. So what, what how's God, what's God say about that? So yeah, you, there's, there could be multiple Lords in the Bible. Cause if you it starts off with the Lord God, if you want to use those terms, I don't use the word Lord God, but in the courts, they call him your worship, your Lord. Cause the judge is the God. In that world and fiction, that's to God. So same over here, no big deal. It's just words, it's just words. So your maker's your Lord God. If you turn, well, then there's some other Lord God. There's a good Lord God and there's a bad Lord God. All right, but we chose which one is really is reigning over us, people. We did it. God gave us notice. He really did. It's in the book. And by the way, it's in the Bible 19 times. I have an ESORD program that's got multiple bibles in the database multiple i can do word searches like i look up the word rapture they always talk about rapture well guess what the word rapture is not in there once huh they're all talking about the big rapture well where did you get that concept from because it's not in the bible if the bible's the word of god then wouldn't you want to go what god says god doesn't say anything about a rapture so where's this bargain rapture thing coming from it's ridiculous <laughs> what i wanted to say but <clears throat> oh yes 19 times this is referring to the Bible, the book of the law. As we know, everything out there is statutes, right? It's acts. That's not law. They call it law, but it's acts. That's because 
God's law, the law, is the law, the, get it? The, that's it. <laughs> Certainly for men and women. It has, I mean, it's alive. You want to be a person? Well, then you, you got something else going on there. But in the meantime, <clears throat> you're still subject to the laws of life. You're still subject to the law of gravity. Gravity. So, you know, that's it. So hopefully that gives you an idea as to why you're in, is how you got in servitude. And uh, maybe things you want to do to get out of servitude, but at least now you know why you're in servitude. Or you should know why you're in servitude. And so that's a good place to start. Now you know what you're involved in and how you got there and why in your possession of these different documents that you show, just saying to the guys on the other side, to the king, his representatives, ah, we shall do this to them, to him, because God said so. This guy's walking into my court in lion's den, and God said, this is what's going to happen to you? Well, I got to do it to him. You're doing the will of God better than most of us are. <laughs> Sad day. Now, <clears throat> W. Uh, there'd be another part to this, but I'm just going to pause this one right here for now and I'll gather my thoughts. Thank you. Ciao for now. So I guess, I guess today's day to get stuff off my chest. <clears throat> now it says in the Bible there that God created the heaven and the earth and God said, let there be light and it's good. So God is light because where did the light come from? If not from God, since there's a source, right? Everything comes from a source. Everything comes from something else. <laughs> but then we get down to Genesis 1, 2, 6, where it says, God said, let us make man in our image. Let me say that again. God said, let us make man in our image. So that's plural. God is a plural thing. Hmm. Okay, so Genesis 1, 2, 6, there's the man. There's the body formed. And over in Genesis 2, 7 is where he breathed life into that body. So you got the body and you got the life. You get the body and you got the life in the body. See, it's like when the life leaves the body, that's when people see what they call the body dead. It's not really dead. It's just... It's it's atomic it's it's uh, electrons is what it's made up of made up of and those as you start to see it decay those electrons are going home <laughs> atoms so to speak it's atomic structure that's all the decay is but it's not dead but anyhow it's lacking the life to move I get that but the point my point here is this there's the body and there's the life in the body unfortunately most of people believe that that they're the body. And now that they believe what they're the body and everything matters, the color matters, the shape matters, the size matters, what people say about my body matters, I could be offended because I believe I'm the body, not knowing that I'm actually the life in the body. And life is life. Life never dies. How does that work? <laughs> and life creates life. That's right. <clears throat> it's only when people started to believe that the body, see what's talked about in the Bible is there too. There'll be no Greek, no Jew, no black, no white, no male, no free, male, nor female. You see, these are labels that man's come up with. And we bought into that stuff, defined it. And now it is what did we say it is. Things went really sideways. But my point here is the body <laughs> is one thing and the life in the body is another. And it's like it's evolved to the point now that people just love to be a victim. Oh, he called me fat. Well, he called me ugly. She said, I'm stupid. Oh, my God. God, I've been offended. I'm a victim. Can we have a nice pity party, please? What's the matter with you people? You're the life in the body. Enough of the nonsense and the ri ridiculous rhetoric that the lawyers are feeding you. It's all divide and conquer stuff. Can't you see it? Clear as day. Bye. Okay, a little bit about power of attorney here. He likes to talk about power of attorney. Well, in the beginning, when God made us, we're made in God's image, right? And as long as we were doing the will of God, then we had God's power of attorney. We were his representatives. We had to do the will of God, right? So what's the will of God? God says, we can do this. We can do that. We can do this. We're all doing it in his name. <laughs> Whatever name we're doing it in, we're doing it in his name. So long as we do, we're carrying out, adhering to, and carrying out his will. <clears throat> okay, so uh, when we're, as long as, you know, if we never turned, we stuck to doing God's will, like, okay, no God's before me, blah, 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 blah. We'd have God's power of attorney. You'd have your birthright, your rights, power, property, rights, and duties would be intact. You wouldn't have given away or pledged them away or voted them away or transferred that power, <clears throat> fictionally or otherwise. But I want to talk here about Hebrews 1.1 1, 1 and Hebrews 1.2. This, this is from where the concept of the person was born into the legal system and also speaking about a power of attorney here. Hebrews 1.1. 1, 1, in Hebrews 1, 2, I'll read those two verses here. God, and I, I talked to this about my Christian friends, but it just goes over their heads because they all want to say praise Jesus. They all think that Jesus is God. <laughs> there's God, there's Jesus, and there's God the Father. God gave his only begotten son, so there's God and there's the son. I mean, it's just like, if 
Jesus is God, then God killed himself. And if God's dead, then God's dead. There is no God. This is all gone. There's no God. Nothing happens. Like in a legal system without contract, nothing happens. Nothing moves. <clears throat> I don't know. People's heads are at God, who at sundry times and in diverse manners spoke in times past unto the fathers by the prophets. So God spoke through the prophets. By and through the prophets, Old Testament, right? And but and hath in these days, this is New Testament now, hath in these days spoken unto us by his son. That would be Jesus. So God spoke to us by and through his son, Jesus. So who was talking here? God or Jesus? God spoke to us through his son. So God was speaking, not Jesus. Okay. <laughs> Simple stuff that my Christian friends, pfft, sorry, all due respect, it says right there, by his son, spoke to us by his son, by and through his son, as in by and through the son, meaning by way of God's power of attorney. We see here, it was clearly, it was God doing the talking through the man known as Jesus. So you saw Jesus' lips moving. It was God moving them, talking, it was words of God coming out of there. As long as that's the case, then yes, Jesus was carrying out the will of God, executing the will of God, carrying out the will of God. Now, this is also where the concept of the person come in per son. You know, God has how many sons? Billions per that son, per this son, per that son. So it's an adjective per son, per my first son, per my second son, per my third son. And every one of us can be a, a begotten son, so to speak. But <laughs> we got a lot of housekeeping to do before we get to that point. Perfected. Another story. So yeah, this is where the concept of the person came in, per, P-E-R, next word, son. It was, it was distorted when it appeared in and was defined in statutes by the, you know, the lawyer guys, legal guys, who put the words together, person. Remember I've talked before about person, son of God, son of a country. <laughs> which, which son are you? you know, per son, by and through the son, you, you're doing the will of God, you're serving God, per son or serving the other God per son. Nevertheless, it is expected God will speak and act through each of us, meaning his will be done by and through us. Of course, we have turned, so that's out the window, but this is how God set things up. That we would represent him, do his will, not our will. I mean, it's not God's will that we would choose another, be our king, some to reign over us for heaven's sakes. He clearly states that thou shalt have no other gods before me. <laughs> So any anyway, all of that, all that blessings we got in the, in the beginning, we just yeah, threw that aside. You know, I, I don't want that. I want some other idiot to rule over. I want an idiot to rule over me. Yep, <clears throat> criminally insane people to rule over us. <laughs> yep, <clears throat> and we deserve everything we get. Nevertheless, it is expected God will speak and act through each of us, meaning His will be done by and through us. Hence, per son, Jesus made this exceedingly clear. He said. I am here to do the will of the Father. Now, if he and God and the Father are the same, he would say, oh, I'm here to do my will. <laughs> he didn't say that. There's Jesus, and there's the Father. There's the Father, and there's the Son. There's the God, and there's the Son. That's two, not one. We're all of the same. We're just extensions of God. I get that, but <clears throat> saying, you know, I don't, I don't get it. But yeah, Jesus made this abundantly clear. He said his brothers are those that do the same. So where the heck does this praise Jesus fit in? You see that it's the same as the Egyptians. They worship the sun, the physical sun in the sky, rather than the creator of the sun. And here everybody, the Christians are doing the same thing in a different way, worshiping the sun <laughs> instead of the creator or the father of the sun. Simple. Not rocket science, but anyhow. <clears throat> Jesus is not God. He was doing the will of God. He had God's power of attorney. Thus was not God, but was as if God, just like the judges in those benches. They're not the queen, but they sit there as if the queen, because in that world, the queen is the font of justice, right? They're just doing everything in her name. As if the queen. <laughs> I'll put this in perspective for you here in a moment. So this is about God's power of attorney. Either we have it or we do not. Well, we had turned. And we lost it when we had turned. <clears throat> Dang. And we're not sovereigns just because we have God in us. 
uh, people are jumping nuts, sovereign bandwagon, don't understand. You know, the system wants you to believe you have your sovereignty, so you kick God off the throne and exercise your will now. That's how they got us, doing our will instead of God's will. <laughs> Anyhow, I'm going to put this power of attorney thing and this person thing in perspective. It's Hebrews 1.1 1, 1 and Hebrews 1.2. God speaking to us through his son or through the prophets. It's no different than you speaking to the court through a lawyer. It's the same thing. He's representing you in the court, right? He's got your power of attorney. You hired him. He's on the record now. He's the attorney. He's the one speaking, acting, and thinking for you. Yeah, you've gotten some involvement to give guidance. But when the lawyer's standing in the court doing the talking, his, his lips are moving. But it's you doing the talking. He's speaking for you. Not him. He's speaking for you. Now, let me ask you this. Is the lawyer you? And you all say Jesus is God because Jesus is speaking for God. So I guess the lawyer, because he's speaking for you, he must be you. <laughs> That's impossible. Just more ridiculousness. I don't think I said that right. Just a sec. So when you do that, you just power of attorney. The lawyer's got your power of attorney to go in there and think, think, and act, think, act, and speak for his client. Again, you're speaking to the court through the lawyer like God spoke to us through his son. Like God spoke to us through his prophets. Now, these son and these prophets are not God. <laughs> they're his representatives. Like the judges is not the queen. They're her representatives. It's the same thing, except we got a reality. We got a counterfeit reality. That's it. If you're, if you're looking in the counterfeit reality for understanding, then you're, you're wrapped up in the counterfeit reality. You're going to see a lot of dark stuff there. If you want to come to the side of the light where God is. The children of light. And by the way, if you want to read Gospel of Thomas, it says flat out in there. I talked about God being, God said, let there be light. <clears throat> I actually have an image of this taken on with somebody was doing, they were doing heart surgery, the flash of light in the heart. <laughs> That's another story in and of itself. <clears throat> What's going on there? But Gospel of Thomas, they ask, he says, well, if they ask, if they ask you who you are, tell them you are children of the light. See, further evidence, you're not the body. You're not the body. I get that you believe you're the body, and if we've bought into that to the extent now that if something happens to the body, we go, ouch. <laughs> it's not affecting the light in the body. Nothing affects the light. <laughs> but your belief that you're the body, all that sudden you know, comes to a manifestation of fruition now. So when you hire a lawyer, the lawyer is and same when you vote. Same when you vote politicians okay you're voting you're on the voters list you presented your identification that you were turned your identity documents that you were turned you're on the voters list now you got representatives in your local district your municipality county state province country whatever so when they go into parliament or in the house of congress or commons whatever you call it they're speaking for you their lips are moving but they're speaking for the voter <laughs> are they you no so how did this concept that Jesus is God? It's not, it's, I'm not harping on Jesus is God. Oh, that just bugs me to hear that all the time because there's other information out there too that makes it abundantly clear. No, that's not the case. So this is about God's power of attorney. In the beginning, before we attorned, we had it. What's that, what's that mean? Well, we got power, property, rights, and duties. Yep, we got power, property, rights, and duties. In other words, to maintain those rights, to keep the rights, you have to hold up all the duties. Like I said, if you don't adhere to the rules of the road, you might lose the right to drive. That's just one example. If you don't pay the mortgage, you might get booted out of the house. You'll lose the right to live there, to call it home. <laughs> so yes, with rights come duties. And we all jump ship when we breach that very first commandment. <clears throat> very first commandment. So the first understanding here to, to maintain a power of attorney, the grantee of the power and authority shall do the will of the grantor. Anybody know why that is? Well, quite simply, if you're not doing the will of the grantor, then you're doing your own will, right? So it's got nothing to do with the grantor at that point. Nothing. That's why you can, uh, police, for example, as long as they're following their duties, it's even the legislation clear and concise, as long as they're doing their duties, they're not subject to prosecution. But if they're doing something that they're not authorized to do, that's a whole different story. Then he's not a police officer anymore. That's when you go after man to man kind of thing. <laughs> it's easier. Not that we promote that sort of nonsense. <clears throat> 
Yeah, so the first understanding to maintain the power of attorney, the grantee of the power and authority shall do the will of the grantor. He must know, adhere to, and carry out the will of the grantor of the power and authority. In this instance, we're talking about God's power and authority. The instant the grantee of the power and authority does his will, e.g., example, chooses another to be as king, lord, and father, it is no longer God's will being done. God's power of attorney is of no effect in your toast. And that king shall do to you what God said that king shall do. It's clear and concise. Read it. This king shall do this because God said that's what this king shall do. <laughs> king goes, well, God said this is what the king shall do. I'm the king. I shall do that. By golly, I love God with all my heart. <laughs> I'm not saying that's the case. That's not my point. Maybe they do. Maybe it's us that's all messed up here. Maybe they're actually doing the will of God and we're the ones not doing the will of God. Maybe that's where we're all in servitude and under a lot of pressure these days. Could it be? Could it be? Could it be our fault? Could us, the people, be responsible for this whole shamaja that's going on here because of that violation of that very first duty? <laughs> Could it be? Just a second. Uh, uh, what do you think, George? I don't know. Do you think it'd be our responsibility that uh, that we uh, you know, we put that we give our power and authority to this fictional king over here, or is it the fictional king's fault that he's got my power and authority? <laughs> well, uh, Steve, nobody put a gun to your head, did they? Uh, nope. Well, it seems to me then that uh, it wasn't forced upon you. It wasn't forced. It was all by your free will act, indeed, wasn't it, there? Yeah, yeah, I did it. Yep, yep. Here we are, people. Wake up. <clears throat> So if we want to get back to a world of sanity, and again, 19 times in the Bible, it's, it's no, it says it's the book of the law. The first five books in the Bible is the law. Every cause of action that could arise between men is already decided in there. Thou shalt not, not bear false witnesses there, which in, in legal system is called perjury. All of this, thou shalt not covet this, is not steal this and steal that. Man, it's all about property. You can almost kind of say that the book, Bible is a bit... It's kind of the law of property, not legal nonsense in God's kingdom, where we're talking about substance, life, real, no fiction. It's the book of the law. It's not the book of religion. It's not the book of Jesus loves me. Yes, I know. Blah, 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 blah. He's going to come back and twinkle his, his nose and save us all. Or ships coming from outer space to save us. It doesn't work that way. Everyone's responsible for the choices and the consequences of it. And everyone's responsible to, to clean up his mess. There's no savior. You can ask for help. Absolutely. You can pray for help. You can decree for help. There's help there. God has. I told you before, God has his government. You think our humans are so smart that we're the only ones who can figure out the form of a, a government? Or the God's this old guy sitting on a cloud somewhere with a big long beard? My bad boys and girls. <laughs> you think that's, that's God? Well, 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 and carry on. But <clears throat> way more. And I propose that it's beyond our comprehension. I know it's beyond mine. Uh, exactly what's going on in the great central sun which is the source of everything but and this sun here is connected to it that's pretty amazing <clears throat> he is the ocean vesta but nonetheless so i think now you should have a pretty good idea why what's happening to you is happening to you and how it came about that's my point here this whole video really other than my little rants i guess stuff I had to get off my chest whatever i'm not sure but <laughs> felt good <laughs> maybe just rambling on blah 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 um, yeah, so the king's doing what God said the king would do. And lo and behold, everyone's servitude in servitude to institutions formed by man. Now, have we not joined that king? Have we not stepped into that world of fiction? It wouldn't be happening. There would only be the kingdom of God here. It's all one kingdom, planet Earth, no borders, no walls, no barriers, no white, no black, no Greek, no Jew, all just brothers in the house. You have different different suits like at Halloween. We can look at the bodies and uh, laugh or whatever, but we know it's just the body. So I'm not taking it personally because I know I'm not the body and you know what I'm saying here kind of thing. Maybe it's like, I'm not the car. It's amazing. You know, I, I used to be that way. I was one of my first things actually on this path that woke me up to this path, how selfish and egotistical blah, blah, was because I, as that car told said, well, when you finally get over it, defining yourself by your car, which is exactly where I was at at that time, <laughs> exactly <laughs> something happened there to crush my ego over a car that's actually an expensive truck but nonetheless <clears throat> it's part of the wake up for me 
and uh, part of the journey. Students ready at teacher appears, I guess. And you never know what the teacher's going to look like. So, you know, yep, there's the basis of why you're in the, in the pickle you're in. And how you got there. Like I said, we have information, not the only guys, probably other information on the internet. You can figure things out for yourself. Absolutely. If you can do that, that's even better. That's the best way. But some people, that's too lazy. They don't want to do that. I don't know. I shouldn't say it that way. Lazy. Everybody needs a little help. I get that. <clears throat> we can all help each other get to the door, but you got to walk through the door. It's none of this collective walking through the door. Not to break free of this legal system that's not going to want to let you go. You know, there's lots of people on the internet saying, you know, say this to the judge. They're going to say this. You can say that. They're going to say this. You say that. It never goes that way. And for anything you can say in court, they got a thousand, if not 10,000 comebacks for it. <laughs> it's like this judge said to my, my judge said to a friend of mine when he was being convicted on uh, the 1099 stuff back in 2011, I think it was cost him a $50,000 fine up in Lindsay court. I was there. Judge said to him 12 or 15 times, I need something that binds me. My friend was just rattling, trying to educate him about how the world's really working out there. And I'm just sitting there thinking, are you kidding me? You're trying to educate the judge on your perception of how, what, what's going on out there. Well, yeah, it's just, you got to do that. It's evidence. It's evidence. Evidence. So the judge was saying, I need something that binds me. And my friend produced nothing. It's obvious. The judge wasn't screwing him over. He screwed himself over without understanding stuff. <laughs> you know, God love you. God bless. I uh, hope it wasn't too hard on people here, but really sometimes we need a slap in the face and the slap in the face is you're not the body or that's one slap in the face. You got yourself into this pickle jar because your dad didn't teach you the law. You want to believe in God? That's fine. But you're all in servitude to institutions formed by men. And lo and behold, that's exactly what it says in 1 Samuel like 10, 17, whenever that was written, whenever, long before we were here, somebody knew something new. If you do this, this is what's going to happen. And we're all in it. <laughs> I, let me rephrase that. I know a couple who got out of that. More than a couple. Yes. They got out of that. They got back to it. So, okay, I screwed up. That's why God has the pardon. That's what the whole uh, baptism thing is about. It's not like, and we're not talking religious baptism nonsense here. Dunky, dunky, wunky, do. <laughs> and you're good to go. Magically, something happens. <laughs> or you let Jesus in your heart. Well, actually, it's God that's beat my heart. Because he made it. He owns everything. It says that in the Bible, right? God owns everything. A lot of property. It's his property. He's the one who makes the rules with respect to the property. Not your body. Women think it's their body. I can do what I want with it. But well, actually, no, it's not your body any more than this body is my body. Thou shalt not kill. Hmm. You don't have abortions. Don't have children. People think that God says, go forth and multiply. means go forth and your brain's out. doesn't say that at all. It's for procreation, right? I ask people, how many times have you had sex? You're like, oh, thousands. Not really, but <laughs> so you think that's what God, what's that got to do with multiplying? It's just for a, a pleasurable experience. It's not multiplying anything except a pleasurable experience. That's, God didn't put us down here with that nonsense. Bigger things going on here. Much bigger things going on down here. And yes, we're definitely in a battle of light and darkness right now. And maybe now more than ever is a time to, instead of fighting for your freedom from these fictional things that actually don't have it, because it's all persons, right? Once you understand that, then you're, you'd know, Mom, I am free. I, I, but the act of fighting for your freedom from, I'm here, I'm here to get my freedom back. <laughs> it's, telling the other, it's saying to the other guy, you have my freedom. And if you believe that and you take that action, then the other guy can say, well, no, I, I don't know. Jesus, the guy thinks I've got his freedom, that I can give him his freedom. So must be thinking he's one of those persons and uh, so he's subject to my laws rules and regulations i guess that's what's going on so well, no i don't no, no i'm not going to give you freedom back screw you get off my property go home get up go get up go bye don't come back no 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 take me to my court <laughs> good luck with that one eh yep <clears throat> ain't happening i think i rambled on enough here what do you think oh uh, boy yeah i know seriously now you know why you're in the pickle you're in think about it seriously think about it and how you got into that mess got a whole series of videos on this stuff god bless you love you ah, okay so the fact of the matter is we've returned so how, how do we address that and the proper way is is, is god lays it out in the new testament <clears throat> see the new testament is where god brought forgiveness in so the new testament is, is an additional to the pre, an addition to or a codicil to the previous 
Testament or will of God <clears throat> being the, 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 the first Testament or the Old Testament. And uh, so the reason that God brought forgiveness in is, is us, because if we want to get back into God's graces, back to as if we never returned, as we return, but as if we never returned, this is what the pardon is, right? Pardon is it's not that you didn't do the crime, it's just that it's off the record, it's not discussed anymore, but you still did it. <laughs> Same with us, we return, that's a fact, you can't undo that, so there is God's pardon that's talked about, that's part of the, the baptism process, to put it in that term for reconciliation. And of course, before that's going to happen, God has to forgive us. In the Old Testament, there was no forgiveness. That's the reason for forgiveness in the New Testament. Nothing to do with human mumbo-jumbo. <laughs> or forgiving them. <laughs> no, 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 no. God had to put that in there, because otherwise it was perpetual sacrifices. If this you do this, you're going to burn another sheep or whatever. So all that kind of stuff. <clears throat> so anyway, that's, that was the forgiveness thing. And why I'm saying this is because people want to go down the baptism path and the full reconciliation path is laid out by god in the bible then you will have to get rid of all your identity documents anything and everything that would identify you or suggest or indicate you is a uh <clears throat> a son of the country a person and then there's a baptism process and it's, it's all basically methods between you and god and then you can just go forth and you, you deal with stuff when you deal with it because so once you get rid of all that stuff you will no longer have the means to appear in person you got to think about this you will not have the means to appear in person. You won't open up a bank account and you need to appear in person. So, <clears throat> anyhow, that's the kind of thing to think about if you went that full baptism route and not everyone's going to be willing to do that. So the other method is, like I said, we talked in our, our previous videos, is <clears throat> we know that man cannot also be a person. That's impossible, discussed in the video and why that is and that, that they can't get around that. That's the one thing they can't get around. If it's impossible, they can deem all they want, but if something they're deeming to be true that's not true is impossible, and they can't do it <clears throat> so with it on the table then it's not possible that you're the person then that's when that's when the whole concept comes in i'm the attorney for the person or the attorney of record or record or attorney in fact for the person for the person which means i'm not the person i think for speak for and act for the person <laughs> just like when i have my business in Beck electronics in toronto <clears throat> all the business the guys or people would talk to me and i'd be doing the talking but i was speaking for the business and whether they knew it or not they were speaking to me they were speaking to the business the business was listening and the business was reacting the, the human interface right the manly interface <clears throat> is required to think for speak for and act for the company <laughs> and um once you start off with your business card that's all making disclosure you're not dealing with me the man or a person you're dealing with the, the corporation and the same when we, you know, we sign stuff that you sign in certain ways to indicate that you're signing for something. So it's not, I, I see a, I see a court case where a guy and everybody agreed, the court agreed that the guy intended to get a loan for his company, but the way it was, the paperwork was done. It was a, per, it was a, per, what they call the personal loan. So they held him personally liable <laughs> for the liabilities of the company that he thought was in the company. So this is, this is the whole thing for these distinctions. So the other method is like I say, as to not possible, you're a person. So now for you're not the person you think for, speak for, and act for the person, but point being, you're not the person. <clears throat> and also, since you're the one thinking for it, speaking for it, and acting for it, like I said, they need us. Without, without us to connect to that thing or use that thing somehow, that thing is, has no purpose. Zero. You could, you could call it uh, uh, employee mask or driver mask or tenant mask or owner mask or rich guy mask or poor guy mask, whatever. There's not a man who puts it on. <clears throat> it's nothing. It means nothing. It has no purpose. So that's the other method. That's what the, the statement of the benefactor, there's the free version there. And I uh, forget in the statement of the first statement of the benefactor movie, it's a free version right there. It gives you a really good foundation to work from to get yourself in that position where you're the attorney for the person, where you think for, speak for, and act for it. <clears throat> so in that sense, you know, it's not a, it's, it's, there's still a bit of an attorney there, but not, the, not to the same extent. And like I say, they can't stick the liability so on and so forth the person to you. And you're not the person, right? <laughs> no, I just think for speak for and act for it. It's not possible I can be a person and, and it doesn't matter. Oh yeah, I did what I did for the last 50 years, but I just found out I was deceived and uh, that, uh, you know, <clears throat> I'm not deceived anymore. So what do you want me to do? Pretend I'm and just go for it like I'm still deceived? <laughs> How's that work? Ain't happening. <clears throat> so anyhow, that's, that's, that's the other option. That's uh, probably the simplest method for people. And it really is the simplest method. And uh, I, for one, am uh, always for simplicity. <laughs> Comes a time when you, you've had enough of the <clears throat> tons and tons of paperwork. So, you know, that's all I wanted to share on that.
And uh, I think uh, let me check. Now, if you, if you want to have a, a complete, full understanding of uh, this attorney, attorney, attorney of record, uh, attorney in fact thing, then uh, we also have the information package, which is available. You go to our blog, www.restorethekingdomofgod.blogspot.com, and you can request that uh, information, how to get that. But otherwise, the free version is there. Like I say, it gives you a really good foundation and uh, lots of information and videos to help you through that. And uh, anyhow, that's it. I'm done. Hopefully that's the end of this video a little longer than I liked them, but uh, it is what it is. God bless.